So the topic today, uh, TRT. So we've had a ton of discussions with different types of doctors, you know, prescribing doctors and, you know, what they've seen with their patients and what works and what doesn't and talking about, you know, estrogen, they're talking about what they feel is a healthy range of testosterone and uh, different types of methods of administration, all this type of stuff. Um, now, from the, the talks that we've had, you kind of do consults for people all over the world and you've seen what TRT protocols could be like in the, you know, in the UK or in Australia or all, all over the world, basically. And what some of these people are even doing that are falling a little bit outside of TRT, like, you know, uh, I know you were talking about having part of the, instead of all tests, they were doing part testosterone, part primobolin, or some guys were throwing in low dose Anavar, some guys were throwing in low dose Nandrolone. So tell me a little bit about that, that stuff that you've, uh, you, you've discussed with other people. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven de Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my bro science hunting partner, Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science-based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe. Click the bell button to get notified. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. So if you guys haven't heard of Greg Doucette, uh, he's probably been living under a rock. He's got some of the, the most uh, entertaining uh, videos, especially with the cats going in front of the, the, the camera. We, we die laughing every time we, uh, we see that. Uh, fellow Canadian, he's out in, uh, was it Hal Halifax? Nova Scotia, right? Halifax. Nova Scotia, yep. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and Doucette is a French Canadian name. I'm from, I'm from Quebec. So I speak French. Steven speaks French. You guys are. So you're kind of related to the uh, I speak Acadians. some French. I'm Acadian. I just don't do it very often, but I do understand it. Alors, on pourrait faire toute la vidéo en français, si vous voulez, parce que Steven parle français. Yeah, it would be, it would, I, could, I could do it, <laughs> but I'd only be able to say about half what I want to say. That's <laughs> okay. I'm just messing I've with you. I've done interviews in French before for the news, and it's tough, but I can, I get by, but it's like, it's brutal. I get you. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, I definitely go take a look because it's he's got a ton of content. He's been doing this for a really long time. Uh, just go YouTube, Greg Doucette. He's got an Instagram channel, uh, Greg Doucette, IFBB Pro. That's right. Uh, yeah. So look him up. Uh, some really, really great content. So um, before we start, I just want to make a really fast disclaimer. I'll try to make it brief to the point. Uh, so we've got a, a Facebook group of the same name, TRT and Hormone Optimization. Uh, it's the same name as the YouTube video. In the group, we have a lot of physicians, doctors, researchers that are in there, and we talk very strictly about TRT. Uh, we don't talk about steroid cycles. We don't talk about peptides. We don't talk about SARMs. We don't want to do that because we don't want to put any of the doctors at risk of being associated with any of those types of discussions, and we cherish their involvement in the group. Uh, in regards to the YouTube channel, uh, we have a little bit of leeway. We don't want to really fall too far outside of TRT and hormone optimization. Um, but considering uh, Greg is a guest and he's an IFBB pro, we may go outside of that box a little bit for today. I just want everyone to be absolutely clear that the doctors and the research physicians in our group have zero association with Greg. They should not be uh, get in any type of trouble for me speaking to Greg. I'm free to speak to whoever the hell I want on the planet as a Stephen. Um, so I just want to make that absolutely clear that the they have no association with this video at all. This is a totally, could be a totally different topic. Uh, so Greg, you want to maybe just a kind of brief introduction in case, like I said, anyone's living under a rock, they haven't heard of you, uh, what you do and uh, take it from there. Well, basically I've been a, a, a bodybuilder since I was a kid. I started training when I was 10 years old. I started competing out of grade 12. I've done bodybuilding, powerlifting. I've entered 55 bodybuilding shows. 42 of the first ones were done 100% natural. I got into the enhancements when I was into my 30s. Now I'm 44 years old. I've competed in powerlifting. I've got world records. I competed in powerlifting, I think, 65 times, most of which were natural. Then later in my life, I got into the enhancements. And now that I'm in my 40s, I'm a lot more concerned with health and not abusing steroids, which I had done in my 30s to try to become you know, the best I could be in the world. Everyone wants to be their best. So at this stage, later in my life, I'm a lot more concerned with health and fitness and longevity. So I do a little bit of everything. I'm like, you know, into the bike riding, weightlifting, eating healthy. And on my channel, I promote all this stuff. I do talk about SARMs and peptides and steroids and also about healthy eating and junk food and what to eat, not to eat, how to train. So basically, 
it's a mix of everything. And on my channel, I try to keep it light and funny and not overly serious and boring so that people don't turn the channel off after five minutes of just being bored to death. So that, that basically sums up what I do. Very good, very good. So the topic today, uh, TRT. So we've had a ton of discussions with different types of doctors, you know, prescribing doctors and you know, what they've seen with their patients and what works and what doesn't and talking about, you know, estrogen, they're talking about what they feel is a healthy range of testosterone and uh, different types of methods of administration, all this type of stuff. Um, now, from the, the talks that we've had, you kind of do consults for people all over the world and you've seen what TRT protocols could be like in, you know, in the UK or in Australia or all, all over the world, basically. And what some of these people are even doing that are falling a little bit outside of TRT, like, you know, uh, I know you were talking about having part of the, instead of all tests, they were doing part testosterone, part primobolin, or some guys were throwing in low dose Anavar, some guys were throwing in low dose Nandrolone. So tell me a little bit about that, that stuff that you've, uh, you, you've discussed with other people. Sure. It's, it's basically, it's up to the laws of each country. Every country has a different law. So the doctors have to follow the laws and they can't just break laws. So depending on what country and you're going to get totally different protocols. For example, here in Canada, you're lucky to get a prescription for testosterone at all. And basically that's all you're going to get. They're not going to give you Anavar. They're not going to give you DECA. They're not going to give you HCG for the most part. In the United States, my phone is just, okay, that's fine. I think. Okay, am I back? Yes. You still see me? Okay, yeah. In the United States, HRT, I've, 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 I've spoken to at least 50 guys on their HRT cycles. They're doing TEST, DECA, MK677, which is a growth hormone secretagogue. They're taking Anavar. They're doing SARMs. They're doing peptides. You name it. Other countries, they're giving them provirin, but they can't give them Anavar. They're giving testosterone. And the testosterone ranges I've seen, the lowest I've had anyone is at 80 that they've told me about, and as high as 490 milligrams on an HRT, okay? Some of the doctors are even prescribing cycles. So they'll say, do this for three months, and then they'll give them Clomid and what have you. And so they're, they're basically giving them anabolic steroid cycles. My advice is always take the lowest dose that makes you happy and do it long term. So rather than cycles on and off, on and off, you're better off saying, okay, what dose can I get away with that's gonna make me happy? If that's 100 milligrams and you feel good, stick to that rather than just say, okay, I'm gonna do 500 because I wanna get big really quick. So that's my best advice or recommendation is take the lowest dose possible that you are happy with and feel good. Because as you get into higher doses, it's more and more dangerous for, everything basically like cholesterol your heart your liver enzymes everything becomes more risky higher the doses the more the risk okay greg um yeah. i know from your videos that you add as your trt personally some primobolan to your uh, test what's the reason for that okay so i had done just only tests for a long time for uh, HRT. When, when I went to an en my endocrinologist, and that's why I prescribed, I had abused steroids for many years, and my test levels in, 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 in Canada was under two, or in, in the United States would be like under a 50, which is way below the reference range. The endocrinologist, after giving me blood work twice, decided, we'll give you 100 milligrams of test a week. I did that for a while, got retested, said, yeah, we can up the dose a little bit put me at 160 milligrams. At 160, he felt my range was too high. It was still in reference range, but to him, it was like, I don't want you to be at high normal. I want you to be in middle normal. And I mean, I can't argue with him. It's my endocrinologist. So he lowered my dose to 120 milligrams. And I did that for about a year straight. Then I decided to do bodybuilding. And so I, sub I basically went on a steroid cycle to do that. I experimented with SARMs and all that during this time. After that, I said, okay, I'm going to go back on uh, HRT. And because I wanted to look leaner and have less water retention, rather than doing a higher dose of, say, 200 milligrams of test a week, I just said, I'm going to do less test and substitute it with some Primo. And the reason for that was just so that I could look better. So it's not really HRT. It's really the test that I'm taking would put me in a normal range. 
the Prevo is just to enhance myself extra. So it's not doctor prescribed um, Primo, for example. So that's just a personal choice for me to give a more aesthetic look. So that's the real reason. Okay. Uh, what type of things have you seen people, uh, you know, replace in their TRT, like you were just talking about Primo, whatever things you were, you, you saw uh, around the world in regards to what other people are adding for enhancement? Well, in the United States, very common to use DECA. Everybody is using test and DECA. That's basically the most common. In other countries, they're adding, well, and in the United States, they're also using Anivar as well. They're trying to free up more testosterone. So they're getting a lot of Anivar. So they're usually doing test and DECA and Anivar. They're also being prescribed MK677, peptides like CJC1295, GHRP2, GHRP6, Sermoralin. They're on everything and anything. It's unbelievable. Um, different countries are giving them uh, pharmaceutical GH, five IUs a day. As just, hi, I'm a 50-something-year-old man. I want to feel better. Five IUs of GH. Wow. I think it's crazy. I don't recommend it. It's obviously not for longevity or for health. But the doctors are, in fact, prescribing it. They're also prescribing Proviron in other countries. And, I mean, it all depends on the laws. You know, they, some countries, they won't be able to give you Anivar, but they will give you Proviron. In Canada, you can't get either. And they're not going to give anyone DECA. So, even though Canada, like steroids is a class four a drug and in the United States, a class three or schedule three. So the States, it's a much more strictly regulated. However, in the States, it's so much easier to get what you want. All you have to do is walk into any HRT clinic. And if you have money, you're getting what you want. It, they even will convince you. I've had people call me up and they'll have testosterone levels of 700 and something. They'll walk in and they'll be given 250 milligrams of test a week, and then they'll come back with test levels of four, 1,400, and the doctors are cool with that. And I'm like, why did you get tests in the first place? You're already high normal. It's money. Doctors are trying to get money. So it, you know, it depends on the country and obviously the clinic, but if you want to and you have the money, you can pretty much get what you want. Got it. What would you, what would you say are – you're, I mean, you were roughly about the, you said you're 44, I'm 45, yep. so it'll be 46 in February. What would you recommend, let's say, what have you seen in your, the best case scenarios for guys in their mid forties or heading over to 50 that are on, uh, would you say just stay on TRT and you're good, just take tests and that's it and you're fine. Or, you know, Hey, if you're getting into your mid forties, approaching 50 or even over 50, uh, I've seen a lot of people that have done this as well and that's benefited them in whatever way. The honest answer is testosterone alone is better than every single other thing combined. It's just amazing. Like if all you're given is a basic HRT dose and you're in a lower, lower range and you get into the upper range, you're going to feel like a million dollars. You don't need all this other stuff. People think that you need these massive cycles to gain muscle. The typical guy that, that will do it, uh, an interview with me or a consult or that I'll coach in a year, we'll put on 15, muscle, 15 pounds of muscle in a year from just doing HRT. And by HRT, I mean 200 milligrams a week or less. Like not crazy high HRT doses. And they don't expect it. They think they should be using more. But even at these lower doses, they're putting on a ton of muscle. And they're always looking for more. Well, maybe I should add in growth hormone. Maybe I should do this and this and this. And I always tell them, look. GH is the most overrated drug in the world. It's the most expensive. It's the least beneficial in terms of what you notice. Most people that use growth hormone won't even notice or feel it. Six months later, it's like, I don't even know if it works. And they're spending $10,000. If you spend $1,000 on testosterone in an entire year, you're going to get more results than 100000 on growth hormone. So GH, to me, unless your doctor tells you you need it and should take it, it's a complete waste of money. Yeah. So that's a, that's the type of question I get. And I'm really glad that you gave me that answer. Cause it's a type of question I get a lot in the group of older guys are like, you know, what should I be doing? You know, I'm in, I'm 45 or I'm 50 or I'm 55. You know, I feel like I should be doing more with their the TRT. And they're always thinking that there's some other thing they should be adding that. And if they don't, they're missing out on, or, or, or whatever. And then I see a ton of guys that are just doing strict TRT, like 200 milligrams a week and they've got no issues and they're, and they're growing. Uh, in the gym and sleeping well and great libido and all that type of stuff. Um, 
I'm just wondering if the guys that feel like they're 200 milligrams a week is, isn't enough just because, you know, maybe their diet's crap or their sleep is crap or they're stressed out or, they're, you know, they're not eating well, whatever the hell it is. And it's not necessarily just a, a reason to say, well, let me just throw on another pile of other drugs on top to try to see if I can overcompensate for my shitty lifestyle. Uh, you know, like you're saying, just that, you know, decent TRT dose is really all you need at the end of the day. I think the main problem is people have unrealistic expectations. They want to look like me. And they think that the reason I look like I do is because I take steroids. They're like, well, if I add in some growth hormone, well, then that's the secret. I'm not on growth hormone. That's why it's not. So I'll add that in and I'll walk around with 6% body fat year round. And that's complete bullshit. It's so stupid. Growth hormone, does it burn fat? Yes. How much? Maybe it burns an extra 100 calories a day. About as much as going for a 10 minute walk. So you can spend $1,000 a month on growth hormone or buy a pair of sneakers and go for a walk and burn more fat on the shoelaces that you put on than the growth hormone. So they're always like, what am I taking and what are they taking? And then whatever they're not taking, they put the blame on that. So they, they might start at 100 milligrams a test and they get some results. Oh, they want more results. They take it 200. Well, oh my God, if I took like what that guy took, I'd be, I'd be in the Mr. Olympia. And it's never the case. So it's always, what am I not taking? Once the guys take growth hormone, well, I haven't taken insulin yet. That's the key. That's the secret. I'm not on Clen. It's got to be the T3. Maybe it's T4. And it's, oh, well, it's the SARMs. Oh, it's the kind of GH. It's because it's from the Middle East. That's the problem. People keep thinking it's what they don't have. And they blame their shitty genetics on the reason why they don't look good. They don't forget. They don't remember. It's like we're 50 years old. We're 60. It's not, we're not wine. We can't just keep getting better with age. There's a point in your life where you're not going to look any better. At 44, I'm not going to keep improving. It doesn't matter what drugs I take compared to being 30. I have to expect some diminished returns at some point, you know. And it, it, even Michael Hearn is not going to look better at 70 than he does right now. It's just not going to happen. So people just need to forget about comparing themselves to other people, compare themselves to themselves and just be the best that they can be at what level they're at. And the lower the dose that they can take, the longer they can do it, the longer they'll live and the healthier they'll be and the less problems they'll have. So if they can just kind of accept the fact that testosterone replacement is going to give you a boost, you still have to put in the work, you still have to eat right, and you still have to exercise and go to the gym because trust me, being somebody that knows the majority of people who take testosterone, growth hormone, everything, you cannot even tell they work out. They don't have abs. They look like poop. They look like melted candles. They look like normal ass people. And so they just need to forget <laughs> that it's like they think, oh, I can tell that guy's on stairs. Look at, look at his delts. Look at his bicep. Look at this. I'm like. You can't tell because I know that person's on steroids because they told me and you cannot tell they worked out a day in their life. So you can't tell by looking at someone because they have a great physique. Oh, they must be on this. The vast majority of people look like crap no matter what they take. And it's more important the diet and the exercise than any drug in the world they could take. Absolutely. Steven, you got a question or? Yeah, well, Greg, um, if I'm 45 as well, so I've been uh, working out over uh, 29 years, so I'm at my genetic limit. I'm natural, sure. or maybe not. I'm on TRT test only. Uh, do guys that have more muscle like me uh, need more testosterone as a TRT uh, to keep that physique when getting older? Uh, what do you think? Well, you definitely look great. And I mean, you definitely look like you're on, I mean, if anyone looks at you, they probably would assume, oh, he's probably on this and growth and all this stuff, but it's not the case. And the, to answer the question, do you need more? Well, every single year that you get older, it's going to be harder to build muscle. So if you want to look you like you do at 45, at 55, you're going to need way more drugs to do that because just in time, your body's just naturally going to fall apart. It just, it's just going to, but does that mean you should up the dose? No, it's just... You, get, you, you should take the lowest dose that you can take to make yourself happy and stay there. And to answer your question, you're definitely not natural if you're HRT. Anyone that's on HRT is not natural. Even if they're at the normal range, like say your test is only 100 milligrams a week, it's still not natural. So I don't like to tell people that, you know, I'm on HRT that's natural. But 
it's, it's certainly healthy. And I certainly encourage people to do it. If their doctors suggest that it's a good idea and if they agree, then I think it's awesome to do that. But you don't need to up the dose because you have more muscle per se. So if you're a 200 pound man with a lot of muscle and then you, you're now 220 because you worked out, you don't need to up the dose per se. Okay. Awesome. Danny? What kind of, um, this, is a, this is a short question and I'm sure that the answer is very, very, very long, but you can give it kind of a, an abridged answer. What would you say if I was to ask you, what kind of practical advice would you have for guys that, you know, they're mid forties, they're, they're, you know, they're, their thirties are long gone. They're getting, you know, on their way to 50 and they're like, okay, I, you know, I need to get in shape. I want to clean up my diet. I want to eat well, but I have no idea what I should be doing. Um, you know, what are some maybe guidelines of the way I should be eating some guidelines as to maybe training frequency. They're not on any cycles they're just doing TRT. Uh, Cause that's a lot that I get the guys saying, okay, I'm on TRT now. And I know my testosterone levels are good. But other than that, like, I don't have a clue what I should do. Okay. Well, the first thing I tell people is lose the word natural and enhance from your vocabulary. Cause people will write me all I'm natural. So I can't do like you all the friggin' time. Doesn't matter if you're natural and enhanced, the same rules apply to you. If you're on steroids, maybe you can eat an extra 200 calories. Big deal. Doesn't matter. If you're on steroids, you can lift heavier weight. Doesn't matter. It's the same principles apply. The laws of thermodynamics don't change when you're on steroids. So it's still calories in, calories out to lose weight. The, probably the biggest myth or the most common thing people tell me, they think they need to eat a lot to put on muscle. So I get a guy on the phone. He's five foot eight, 195 pounds. This was today. And he's like, yeah, I, I didn't eat enough. And I'm like, but you're 51 years old and you're five foot eight, 195 pounds. I was like, are you Ronnie Coleman? Like, are you jacked? No. I'm like, well, what makes you think you need to eat more? And so my biggest advice is eat less. Everyone eats too many calories. And by everyone, I mean 99% of people eat too much. If you want to look good, one of the biggest factors is being lean. Soon as you look lean, you look like you're enhanced. You look like you're an athlete. You look better. People who are chubby just don't get that same look. So if you have a six pack, you're automatically kind of given that, wow, you have a good physique. So eat less. So that's the biggest advice I can give. The next is to eat low calorie dense foods. By low calorie dense, I mean foods that don't have a lot of calories. Doesn't mean that if it has a lot of calories, it's not healthy. So for example, I tell people don't eat a lot of nuts. Nuts are healthy though, Greg. I'm like, yeah, if you're trying to gain weight, but see people eat a bunch of nuts, peanut butter, and the calories add up and then they end up overweight. So to lose weight, eat low calorie dense foods, fruits and vegetables. People are scared of fruits now because it has fructose in it. It's just crazy. Like when we were younger, we were kids. We knew that fruit and vegetables were good for us. For some reason, something happened in the last 30 years that we became carbophobes. We thought we have to eat once every two days. We had OMAD, Cheeto, every crazy diet exists. The old just eat healthy and exercise, it's kind of been lost. I don't know why. So all I would suggest is to, for people to eat low-calorie dense foods, to start eating less calories and to exercise. And if you lose weight, you're going to look better. You're going to feel better. Now, I'm not saying you should walk around at 5% body fat. We all have a certain point where, we're, where we feel good. For me, I don't feel good as lean as I am right now, but I'm dieting for a competition. So a slightly higher percent body fat feels good for me, but you don't want to be obese. So somewhere in that happy medium is where you should be. 